welcome back to the North Crossover, guys. Let's go to the Warriors the NBA Finals. Uh, Thoughts on how, how good have they been? How good have they played this whole, like, I mean, mm-hmm. not just the series, but the whole playoff postseason in general? They play very well, especially without Andre Iguodala, who's been that main guy to push them a little bit more, especially when they're down, right? But they've been dominant, dominant throughout the game, dominant especially the third quarter. I think Stephen Curry was amazing uh, game two when he made that record finals. And then Kevin, and Kevin Durant carrying his team <laughs> to the, another victory and making it an 0-3 series uh, with, yeah. against the Cleveland Cavaliers. Carrying shooting, an unanimous MVP. Shooting it as another game shot. But I, I want to I talk about the MVP later. But like I, the, the, this whole situation about having another super team, I mean, they're, they're good. They're really good. I mean, I know they're going to get criticized about, you know, again, do we really want to see this again, another 3 P? I I mean, we've seen, like, we talked off, off air, there's been three peats before, there's been two peats before, I mean, and especially a lot of other super teams have been built before. So why not now, especially with this type of group of players, these, spe- these special group of players, and I mean, it would be a little bit perfect for them in a way, I mean, for a lot of the fans are for Golden State. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, yeah, the Warriors are definitely a good team, but I think everyone saw that coming because even before they got Kevin Durant, they were a championship team. They had the first ever unanimous MVP and a constant defensive player of the year nominee in Draymond Green, plus a, one of the best shooters in the league as well in Klay Thompson, and Iguodala with that death lineup. And then they added Kevin Durant, who was an MVP in his own right, mm-hmm. who had been to the finals himself, virtually carrying that team too with a younger Westbrook and younger Ibaka. So, I mean, of course they're good. They should be good. Mm-hmm. And the way they're dominating LeBron and, well, whoever else he has on his team makes sense. Um, is it fun to see, what, four times in a row now with this? Uh, this Finals, four times? Four, four, four times? times in a row, yeah. Four times. Yeah. I mean, no. I mean, I want Boston Rockets, not because I like the team, just for something different. But it's, it makes sense. I mean, they are the best team in the West, regardless of record. Doesn't matter that they didn't win 60 games this year. Doesn't matter that Houston took them, well, had a lead 3 2 in the, in the West Finals. They're still the best team on paper and will still be the best team until any of them need to leave or want to leave, which I don't see that happening. And I'm going to look at it in, in coming next season, which probably will be ending really quick. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll be coming real quick. Um, like, whether, whatever happens in the West, trade-wise, free agent signings, I mean, I think Golden State Warriors will be that team to beat, again, 100%. Uh, one of the best teams uh, uh, to make it to the finals. I think one, most of fans thought the Houston Rockets would probably make it, beat the uh, Warriors I in did. the finals, or in the conference finals, or even Minnesota Timberwolves when they signed these many, these many guys on paper, though, yeah, yeah, on no, paper, no, no, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's still, it was an argument that, you know, when these guys signed and these group of players haven't played yet, I mean, they, they might be able to stop, be that team to stop so either Houston. So it was Houston. OKC, too. Exactly. But, I mean, right now, you can't criticize or look at the Golden State Warriors coming next year and see whoever made trades and free agent signings. These, these guys, group of guys, are very special, mm-hmm. and they're the best team in the world right now and could potentially go for a three-peat. I, I, I think I could go back to also the uh, Clay's uh, interview where the reporter is saying that, you know, do you think what they're doing right now is kind of ruining the league? And uh, he simply answered it in a sense like, you know, it's not our fault that in terms of how we, they built, how the organization was able to build through draft and made good signings and uh, cleared up enough space to be a potential to land Kevin Durant. So it wasn't like, you know, all these players that they had they helped with the recruitment, but it was also the org- franchise organization making the right kind of draft picks, making the right kind of um, p- personnel moves, signings of their players. Uh, it, it was just them with the good organization doing the same thing. Uh, but I feel like uh, we, um, when he says that you know the league could do better, uh, I feel like a lot of teams that we have right now are have this kind of uh, short-term success kind of mentality. Where as uh, remember what uh, Brooklyn did with the signing uh, when they tried to get uh, KG <laughs> yeah. and Paul yeah. Pierce. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a lot of teams right now that have such short-term mentality mm-hmm. in terms of how they build their franchise, and it's ruining the league. I feel like it's not it's not the Warriors' fault that they were patient with their draft picks. They were patient with their with the development of their players, and I feel like the only team really that's doing the same that's kind of following their footsteps is Boston. Uh, well, ba- well, Philadelphia kind of did it in, you know, the trust the process kind of <laughs> tank really bad. Remember, like, yeah. you know, the Warriors were competitive 
they were kind of progressing up. You know, when Mark, in Mark Jackson area, when they took it over, when he took over the team, they were progressively team, yeah. progressively improving every single year. So they were they they were built the same. I think the, them and the um, I feel like Raptors are kind of in the same situation too in terms of what they're doing with their franchise. They're not doing you know, they're not they're not they're not focusing on short term success, yeah. which a lot of teams are doing nowadays. Uh, starting from uh, you know the only thing I can remember really was the Brooklyn. Um, okay, see, okay, okay, see, did the same thing. You know, they're focusing on short term success when they didn't sign James Harden, saying we're we're not going to pay you this much money and look. And they but, kept Perkins. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So it, so for me, uh, it's not so much of we should criticize Durant for uh, for joining a team that has such um, star power, but uh, for him we, for him to look at the organization, because a lot of teams that have treated like uh, Lakers and and. Uh, the the Chicago team, mm. uh, there is a lot of ego in it. To Jordan, uh, there is a lot of ego with uh, Dennis Rodman. There's ego with Kobe and 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 um, Shaq. There was a lot of uh, power struggle. Whereas this team is just a totally different built team. There is no ego between each other. Mm -hmm. Everybody want like is willing to share the spotlight, the limelight. The success, every mm. single person is like, hey. Could I actually go off a little point that you made before, like how like yeah. the Warriors built their team the best way possible, the best yeah. way, the proper way. It kind of reminds me of how like, I'm sure everyone goes to the cinema. It's like how movies are nowadays. Yeah. Let's say the Warriors, for example, or the MCU. Yeah. Okay. It may sound a little dirty, but follow me. Mm -hmm. The MCU uh, built right, the movies yeah. properly, right? They started a multi-billion dollar franchise off of one movie and built it properly. Built a massive franchise, and it's the best example of that. But you've seen other companies, other big studios try to copy that formula, right? You had the DCEU, which isn't as good. And that's where a lot of teams in the NBA now are DCEU. You had also like the Dark Universe that they try to start with that uh, Mummy movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's been other examples, but like the Warriors are the MCU and same every other team is most of the time is the DCU at best. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the Warriors are definitely a prime example of the way you should build in the NBA, which is true, which is fair. I mean, they didn't do it like how Miami did back in when, LeBron, when LeBron went there, right? Back in the 2000s, 2010s. But it's not the fact that he went to a good organization either, because obviously he made the smart move. He chose the best organization for him, for his future, for him to win titles. But as a regular fan looking at it, I always feel like he made the game less fun to watch because... He joined a team that had so much talent and was already such a good team. They didn't need the extra boost. Mm -hmm. I understand what Durant did it. Mm -hmm. But even back in, what was it, 2011, when Chris Paul tried to sound with the Lakers, yeah. David Stern could boss that, right? Yeah. And he sent him to the Clippers. Mm -hmm. I don't know why Adam Silver didn't do that with Durant. Um, that's just my opinion. Not that He had, he had uh, the, the actual NBA organization has part ownership with the, uh, with the New Orleans. Oh, well, now, I guess the... the the at that time, the Pelicans. Yeah. So um, they were able to have a say in terms of the trade. Yeah. That's true, actually. Yeah. Right. But it's I I understand like in terms of Durant's mm -hmm. move, everybody just kind of everybody saying he's any rings that any rings that he wins at this point is doesn't count for mm -hmm. in a sense. Uh, but the thing is that he in terms of his play, he he didn't kind of step out. He didn't kind of play. With Steph or Curry in a sense, uh, or Clay or Draymond saying, "I'm gonna take a back seat." He kind of took over the team, mm -hmm. which is a little bit different in terms of, which is kind of the same thing what LeBron did. Mm -hmm. it was, you know, Dwayne Wade was this is was Dwayne Wade's team, and uh, he was Miami, Miami Heat, and uh, the only reason why they actually started winning championship was um, LeBron deciding to take over, saying, "I'm the best player in this team, and I'm gonna yeah. take over." And I'm going to be the main po focus, and you guys are going to play with me in a sense. And that's kind of what Durant's doing right now, because I don't think they would have won the championship last year if Durant didn't decide, like, you know, I'm the best player in this mm -hmm. team, even though I'm, the f you know, it's my first year on it. He, and that's what he's doing this year again. He's saying, I'm the best player in this team. Uh, I'm not just joining a team just because. Quickly, finals MVP. Uh, so the Warriors win it, Durant. I want Curry to win, but Durant just kind of show you how consistent he is in the finals. I'm going to say yeah. they have to go to LeBron James, all right? <laughs> well, yeah, you can't get, no, he has to have a performance like Jerry West to have that. Well, he was the first finals MVP, too, so they didn't know yeah. how to really gauge it. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. Well, that's all we have for Bernard Crossover, guys. I hope you enjoyed that episode. We had some heated arguments. <laughs> but 
as always, we want to thank you guys for always supporting us and always commenting on our show, giving us positive feedback, and coming on to us every time you see us in a basketball tournament. So anything you guys like to say before we end the show? Yeah, don't forget to follow us on Pernod Cross or continue the conversation. Do you agree with any of the points Xander's talking about, Mark and Marcos talking about, or myself? And join the conversation. What do you guys think of the finals? Yeah, and uh, we'll see you over there, man. Any last shout out? Uh, so and if everyone's noticed in this hat, it's uh, Love Life. Well, I can't actually remember what it says, but is it's it my just sister's. Love? Just Love? Just Thank Love. You. There we go, got you. So this is actually from my sister who you can follow on Instagram. Her name is Coach Carey. She's a motivational speaker, so if you need a little pep in your step, you're feeling low down, or just need some, you know, guidance in life, you can go follow her. Hopefully, she'll inspire you. Awesome! Thanks That's for great, having me. Thanks for coming on our show, dropping up some insights. No problem. And other than that, guys, stay balling. <laughs>